In this video, I'm going to show you the inbuilt multi-state objects that are available in Captivate's drag and drop. So the reason for this video is I can't tell you how many times I've gone to create a particular effect in an Adobe Captivate drag and drop and realized that I'd forgotten which each of the inbuilt drag and drop states is for each object and all that stuff. So today we're going to go through it. I've got a drag and drop set up. We'll be able to see each example and how it can be applied to your drag and drops and the things that you can do with multi-state objects. Okay, so I've set up this very simple drag and drop. This, uh, this item here, this uh, sphere, is my drag source. And these are two potential drop targets with the correct answer being the second drop target. I've added some nice little elements to it like uh, an immediate feedback for, for each of the drop targets. And of course we have a great job, click next to proceed. And I simply put a next button on the timeline after when the drag and drop interaction would normally pause. So if you want to enhance this, here's what you can do. You can select your drag object and go into the properties inspector and go into state view for the multi-state objects that are available for drag items. And what we'll do is we'll make this real simple. I'm going to add all the inbuilt drag states that are available and we'll label them so it's very clear what is what and that's it so we have the drag over effect i'm going to change the label here to drag over so we know exactly what's what and we'll do the same thing for drop accept drop reject and drag start and you can do other things too, like customize the appearance, change the color of the object, change the shape itself, uh, even change it to be different images and things like that, depending on what you want to accomplish here. But for our purposes today, we just want to know what happens and when it happens when you drag an object over to its drop target. Now, similarly, you can do the same thing for your drop targets as well. So let's First of all, take this incorrect, this distractor drop target, and we'll go into state view and we'll add all of the states that are available for that as well. And the reason I'm doing one of each is that there are specific drop correct and drop incorrect. So we'll just make sure that these are all labeled appropriately like before, drag over, drop accept, drop reject, drop correct, and of course drop incorrect. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other drag and drop item here. So let's exit from here. Okay, so while I was doing this I decided that just simple black objects wasn't quite enough to maybe illustrate the point here. So I've added some color to this. Let me show you real quick here. So here's my drag object and we can see that the drag over has this neat little purple effect and drop accept is green and drop reject is red and drag start has this blue effect and that's it for the draggable objects. And in both cases of the cylinders that we're dropping them into, the drag over is also purple. And we've got drop accept as green, drop reject as red, and drop correct as green, and drop incorrect as red as well. So these appearances will also have some additional meaning as well. So let's preview this and take a look at what it looks like. So again, remember that, you know, a normal drag and drop, nothing would normally change unless you added these multi-states to each of your objects. So it's a great way to enhance your drag and drop and make it a little bit more engaging. So let's select our normal drag object. As soon as I click on it, it changes its name and its appearance. You can do a variety of different things with that. 
and we'll move it over to, first of all, our first object here. You can see both have turned purple now, which is really kind of a cool effect. If I let go, it's a rejected uh, draggable because, of course, it doesn't match with that first object and it returns to its normal state now. So let's start this again, but bring it over to the second drop target and we'll release it here. And of course, I set it up to disappear and also turn the drop canister, if you will, into green to let us know that that's the correct place for it. And we saw, of course, our caption feedback, both for the drop target but also for the interaction as a whole. And now we can continue on with the rest of our project. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.